Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Welcome to my channel. Today I have an early 2000s 4Runner with a check engine light on. It has EVAP code. Now the EVAP code that's stored is a PO440, which is an EVAP system failure. Now that doesn't tell you what the failure is, but that's what it says. Now if you look in pending codes, this car had a PO442, which is a small leak. Now in the Toyota graph for EVAP test, PO442 and PO440 are in the same spot. So if one of them fails, they both fail. So Now this is what it looks like right here. This is kind of an idea. You can see right there in the, the about a little over halfway where it says leak testing period occurs and it shows the codes. That's what I was talking about. Generally, you're going to have both of these codes together. All that means is that there's a problem, but since it's accompanied with the 442, it's it's a, it's going to be a small leak. In this video, I'm going to show you what the most common leak is and the most commonly missed leak. We're going to test the we're going to test for it and then we're going to show the final test. So let's get started. So here is the most common leak found. This is called a rollover valve or a check valve or in some cases uh, some parts stores call it a vent valve. The purpose of it is if the vehicle rolls over, it's supposed to prevent fuel from leaking. The hose that's connected to the little nipple is rotted with fuel. We're going to replace that, but you have to drop the tank to access this. So here is the fuel tank. There's the rear of the vehicle, the rear of the fuel tank, and the canister is on top of it. Now that corrugated hose right there on the left, that one goes around over the frame, and it connects to the rollover valve. And the rollover valve is right behind that little barrier. Kind of hard to see. I'm going to stick my phone up there. There's the rollover valve, all covered in dirt. That's what we're going to be going after. Now the fuel pump resides right up there. And the rollover valve resides there. We need to disconnect the fuel filler hose. There's a vent hose right there that goes up to the filler neck. And then behind here is another hose that we'll have to disconnect later and that one goes back to the rollover valve. Then at the front, we're gonna have to disconnect the hoses that go to the fuel pump and the fuel pump connectors. Now I've found the easiest way to disconnect hoses like this is to dip a, hit, a pick in uh, in Sil Glide or some sort of lubricant, even WD-40, and then slide it in the hose and it helps you break the seal. And then you slide your pick all the way around the hose to break it loose. Now dipping your pick in, in, in some sort of lubricant helps not tear the hose. And then you just slide it around the hose to break it loose. You can also slide your pick in slightly and spray WD-40 in there and then work the WD-40 around, either way. So now that it's broken loose, I'm going to try to pull it off. I'm doing this one-handed, also standing on a box with my head up in the fender. So it's going to be kind of difficult, and I'm holding a camera. I just want to show you. Now, if we didn't have this thing lubed up, lubed up it definitely would not come off like this. We will be using a pry bar to get it off. Boom. Got it off. Good to go. Now, before we put it back together, we're going to take Silglide, and we're going to run it around the inside of all the hoses that have to connect to make it easier for install. So for the smaller hoses, you just want to use a small pick like this, or, ho or even big hoses that are really, really stuck. You may have to use this to get it started. You just dip it in the cell glide and slide it up in there. Now, I can't tell you how long I had been doing this before I finally learned this trick. I wish I knew this 10 years earlier. It would have made life a lot easier and probably helped me prevent from tearing some hoses and having to replace hoses that... I shouldn't have had to replace. And a lot of times they're a pain when you have to replace them. Now for that hose right there, it's easier to go around this brace on the frame to get to the clamp because the clamp is straight up and down from the body, from the top of the truck. There's a clip on the tank that the fuel, that the uh, electrical connector slides, it locks into. Now the easiest way to dislodge this clip right here is with a 10 milli socket. You just take a shallow 10 milli, slip it on there, twist the socket, and it pulls right out. Now this harness has so much slack that you can drop the tank 
almost all the way before disconnecting the connectors. And it makes it easier so you don't damage anything on top. I'm warrantying this canister, well, because it has the dormant wings and it failed. But anyways, the easiest thing to do for this tank is disconnect this uh, corrugated line right here that goes to the rollover valve. And then you're also going to disconnect this line here. And then they're going to slip over the frame right there. And they're going to come down with the tank. Easiest way to do it. You have to disconnect the pressure line right there. You just have to release that red clip and the line pops off. And then right behind it is the return line. Just disconnect that. And those are going to stay with the tank and come down. And that's, that's it. Now we're going to get ready to drop the tank. So the first step is to remove the big shield that's under the tank. You're going to remove those two outside 12s there in the front. And also these two 12s. Then the big shield's going to come down. Then you're going to disconnect that bolt right there. The clip on the other side for the, for the hanger. Right up there. And then also the one bolt in the middle of those three on the front. And that's all that holds the tank up. There's the rollover valve right there. Here's the culprit. When I was smoke testing this thing, I had to smoke test it a lot of times. And I finally started to see some oil building up around this rollover valve. We're going to be replacing that, show you how to do that. And then also this rotted fuel line that's attached to it right there on the right. We're going to replace all that. So we need to disconnect this big plastic hose. Now previous to me, one of the tabs had already been broken off. You can see that on the left side. But the way that you depress this is you can, you're supposed to squeeze it and it releases the tabs, but it never works for me. So I stick a pick in one side right there and I, and I open up that clip and then I twist the line like that to keep the clip on the outside of the lip. And then I do the same thing to the top. Now, when we put it back together, we want to lube the O-ring on both ends to help it not leak and also help it install, install easier. Then the next step is going to be getting this rollover valve out. Some of these I have had a very difficult time getting out. So we'll see how this one goes. You're also going to need a seal that the rollover valve goes in. It won't come with the rollover valve. Before you mess with this valve here, you want to take an air nozzle and blow all this garbage out and put it right down there. Make sure you get everything out. You don't want it in the tank. Now, the, things like this are easier. If you can use something to twist it side to side and break the seal, it makes it easier. So we're going to just to put a pry bar on each side, apply pressure, and hopefully it pops out. This was one of the easiest rollover valves to pop out. I just put a pry bar on both sides and it popped right up. Now this is where the baby oil was. Now the seal, but look at the seal. Look at that thing. That's nasty. So you want to make sure that you grab a hold of your seal. Some of these are rotted out pretty bad and it could fall in the tank. You don't want that to happen. Now the seal could have been leaking and it leaking upward and causing the, 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 the eye to see that it looked like it was leaking out of the rollover valve. But usually... That seam right there where the top of the rollover valve meets the body, that's usually where it leaks. And you can see how it's wet right there in that one section. That's generally how a rollover valve leaks, just like that. This one wasn't bad enough to show smoke. It just... Due to pushing and prying with this thing, I have the tank strapped to the jack just to make sure it doesn't fall. Now here's the seal. We're going to put some lube on the inside. That lip has to go in the tank. We're going to put some lube around that to help it go in easier. We're also going to lube the inside so the roller valve slides in easier. And you don't want it to tear. And just like always, I always use Silglide. There it is. That's general purpose lubricant. Now hopefully I can get this to pop in with the camera to be able to see. But you can see it's all lubed up. Now I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera so it's a little bit awkward. So we're going to just pop it in one side, slip it around. Then you want to take your finger, stick it inside just to make sure that it wrapped around the tank. So we're going to slide the rollover valve in. We're going to lube it up. 
lube up the inside. This does not hurt anything to lube this up. You don't have to only put a tiny amount. It's not going to hurt anything. You definitely want to make sure it's lubed up enough. So now we're just going to kind of uh, slide this down, twist it, rotate it side to side, however you want to get it down. Now there's just a small, uh, kind of like a nipple on the rollover valve that has to pop through the seal. And it actually popped in really easy. And then we just need to rotate it so it's in its right position. So I'm pretty sure I got everything on top of the tank sealed up. Going to use my red line detection speed smoke machine. Got it hooked up to a battery over there from a Cummins. Going to turn it on. There it is. There's the flow gauge. Now this is going to tell us if we're le if we have a leak, if we're sealed, how big the leak is. So we'll see. You definitely want to test this tank while it's down. It's easier because if the ball drops here then I know my tank is completely sealed. And if we have an issue in the future, then we know that it's the canister, because everything is in the canister, or the closed canister valve or the perch valve. So this is going to be real time. Now this is what it looks like. The ball is going to bounce like this as it's sealing. And then it will eventually drop all the way to the bottom, showing that it's sealed and there is no leak. Showing this in real time so you can see what it looks like and what this actually looks like when it really does seal a system. Now, every car is different. Every EVAP system is different. And also how much fuels in the tank makes a difference. Now, final confirmation on this is with everything in the car. So I just got the hose disconnected from the purge valve. I'm just tapped in there. I already know the purge valve's good. So we're just testing from here to the tank with everything hooked up, canister and all. So I sped this up to kind of show a quick way, but now we're, we're all hooked up and we're gonna see this thing drop all the way to the bottom. Now before it would just sit there and bounce at the bottom and it would never seal. And now we're sealed. Now when you're testing these early Toyotas, you can command the purge valve, which is the front door, easily with the scan tool. You cannot manually close the back door with the scan tool easily. You have to go back and apply power and ground. So the easiest thing to do is to just pinch off the vent hose. And if you have a leak, it will show. If you pinch it off and your ball drops, then you need to mechanic, then you need to electronically test your vent solenoid. Let me show you how to manually test this with just pinching it off. Now you're gonna come back here to the big hose and pinch the hose off. Now I have two pairs of pinch off pliers because I've had times where I pinched a hose off for EVAP and it didn't completely seal it. And I was fighting something that, that was just created by me. So I always pinch it off in two places. So it'll be this big hose right here with the yellow stripe. Now remember that's mechanically. You're not testing it electronically. This is just seeing if the system is capable of sealing. Thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button, hit subscribe button, hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content you definitely don't want to miss. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.